Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to to God. God. Oh, oh, oh. 
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness. And found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on, he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says my appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and giving it to his disciples, said, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, from now on I shall not drink this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it with you new in the kingdom of my Father. He said... 
After singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, This night all of you will have your faith in me shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all may have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there to pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass me by, yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not keep watch with me for one hour. Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again. My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. He said, stay awake, stay. still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to his sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its sheath. For all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my Father, and he will not provide me at this moment with more than twelve legions of angels? But then how would these scriptures be fulfilled, which say that it must come to pass this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, 
Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass, that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. He said, I will hand him over, I will hand him over, on the way to Calvary. I will hand him over, I will hand him over, on the way to Calvary. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance as far as the high priest's courtyard. And going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Though many false witnesses came forward, Finally, two came forward who stated, This man said, I can destroy the temple of God and within three days rebuild it. The high priest rose and addressed him. Have you no answer? What are this man testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether you are the Christ the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, Yes, blaspheme. What further need have we of witnesses? You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, He deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, Prophesy for us, Christ. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, You too were with Jesus, the Galilean. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you're talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus, the Nazarene. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you too are one of them. Even your speech gives you away. At that, he began to curse and to swear, I do not know the man. And immediately a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. He said, I will not deny you, I will not deny you on the way to Calvary. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? Look to it yourself. Flinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priests gathered up the money but said, It is not lawful to deposit this in the temple treasury, 
for it is the price of blood. After consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why that field, even today, is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet, and they took the thirty pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor who questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you know not? Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now, on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So, when they had assembled, Pilate said to them. Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas, or Jesus called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message: "Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I have suffered much in a dream today because of him." The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas. But to destroy Jesus, the governor said to them in reply, "Which of the two do you want me to release to you?" They answered, "Barabbas." Pilate said to them, "Then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ?" They all said, "Let him be crucified." But he said, "Why? What evil has he done?" They only shouted the louder, "Let him be crucified." When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, "I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves." And the whole, the whole people said in reply, "His blood be upon us and upon our children." Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had Jesus scourged and handed him over to be crucified, they shouted, "Crucify him! Crucify him!" On the way to Calvary, crucify him! Crucify him! On the way to Calvary. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, "Hail, King of the Jews!" They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha. Which means place of the skull. They gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall, but when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there, and they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, King. Of the Jews. 
Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. So he is the king of Israel? Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, This one is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. came the land trembled the veil of the temple was torn people in the distance had assembled on the way to Calvary and behold the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with him who were keeping watch over Jesus feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening, and they said, Truly. This was the Son of God. There were many women there looking on from a distance who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in clean linen and laid it in his new tomb that he had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there facing the tomb. The next day, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that this imposter, while still alive, said, After three days I will be raised up. Give orders, then, that the grave be secured until the third day, lest his disciples come and steal him and say to the people, He has been raised from the dead. This last imposture would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, The guards is yours. Go, secure it as best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a seal to the stone 
and setting the guard. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. Remember back in the day when you could go out on a Saturday evening or a Sunday afternoon with family and friends to a fine restaurant and actually sit down at the table and enjoy good service and a fine meal and not just to rely on takeout. Hold that memory for a moment. Because when we go into one of these restaurants, it's always a special experience, especially if you see the finely pressed white linen tablecloth, the linen napkins neatly folded, the cutlery in just the right order, and the stemware uh, waiting for you. And indeed, the waiter comes and offers you a menu. What do you do when you go into a restaurant, especially one you have never been in before, and you look at the menu. Most of us do one of two things. We look at the price, or we go to the back of the menu and check out the dessert offerings. Essentially, the scriptures which we listen to today are a menu for what will unfold over the course of this coming week, over the course of this holy week. We began with hearing the voice of the prophet Isaiah, whom the Lord had given a well-trained tongue to speak a word that would rouse the weary. Perhaps they were speaking to exiles in Babylon long, long ago. Or maybe they were speaking to you and me in the midst of our weariness and our fear and our anxiety in face of the impact of the pandemic of the coronavirus. When we are weary, we need a word of encouragement. And yet when the prophet speaks that word of encouragement, it really doesn't go well for him. He meets adversity and uh, negative reaction. It's a reminder that Over the course of this week, that voice of the servant of God, the suffering servant of God, will speak to us. In the early days of the week, on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday of Holy Week, we will hear songs from the suffering servant, from the prophet Isaiah, culminating on Good Friday, when we will hear at length the fourth song of the suffering servant, and how To serve God's will, he suffered grievously, but remained faithful through it all. In our gospel today, we hear the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. And as the week goes on, we will hear the passion again on Good Friday, but that time from the gospel of John. We need to pay attention to what Matthew offers us because these are all offerings on the menu. Now recall that uh, Matthew began his passion with the setup of the betrayal by Judas. Whenever Matthew makes reference to Judas throughout his gospel, he is never just Judas or Judas Iscariot. He is Judas, the betrayer. And at the Last Supper, when Jesus said, one of you is about to betray me, which one, Lord, which one? Surely it's not I, Lord. While all the other disciples said, address Jesus as Lord, Judas addresses him as Rabbi, which is the same way that the non-believers did among the religious leadership. Jesus also said, The one who will betray him would be the one who dipped his hand into the bowl with him. And of course, if you know anything about Middle Eastern dinner uh, practices, there's a big bowl in the center of the table and everybody reaches in and they use their hands to do it. 
And it's quite, quite possible that every one of those who were sitting around the table with Jesus dipped their hand in the bowl at the same time. And yet it all comes down to how they revered Jesus as Lord or as Rabbi. Matthew is the only one who tells us that Jesus, Judas had a change of heart. He realized that things went awry. Perhaps he was expecting when he betrayed Jesus with a kiss, that Jesus would rise up and be that zealous military leader that all of Israel was waiting for to overthrow Roman oppressors. And yet it was the Jewish patrol that came to get Jesus. It is also ironic that Jesus, knowing full well what Judas came to do, still addressed him as friend. It always leaves the door open for reconciliation. Judas, with his change of heart, took the 30 pieces of silver back and threw them before the uh, chief priest and the, uh, the temple authorities, saying, I have betrayed an innocent man. And that betrayal basically set in motion the fulfillment of what Jesus came to do through his passion and death and resurrection. Matthew is the only one who tells us about Judas' change of heart, and rather than to seek reconciliation, he took his own life. But ultimately, Judas is not the only betrayer. The religious leaders betrayed Jesus the high priest Caiaphas betrayed Jesus by condemning him before he heard a shred of evidence. Pilate betrayed Jesus by washing his hands of this whole mess. I hope it was a Hail Mary hand wash. And ultimately, even his disciples betrayed him inasmuch as they all went scattering when the going got tough. It is also only in Matthew's Gospel that when Pilate is trying to find a way to set Jesus free, it is even complicated further by his wife coming to tell him that she had a dream that said, have nothing to do with this righteous man. And this Gentile, who perhaps had never even encountered Jesus, knew that as a righteous man, he was for the children of Israel the fulfillment of all their hopes, the promised one. Over the course of Matthew's passion, we suffer with Jesus, who had given himself to us freely. And once again, after the Passover meal, and they went out to the Garden of Gethsemane, and he went off to pray by himself. He took with himself Peter, James, and John. But this experience was far different than the last time he took them up the mountain of transfiguration. For it was not glory that they saw in this moment, but sadness and grief and the fear of what was to come next. And yet, the clarion call, if this cup cannot pass me by, then not my will, but your will be done. The sons of Zebedee knew well what that cup was all about. For when Jesus asked him, when they asked for a seat of, of glory and the right and the left, when he came into his kingdom, he said, can you drink the cup that I am about to drink? Earlier that evening at the table, when he passed the fourth cup of blessing to them, he declared it to be his blood poured out for them. And it is only Matthew that we learn why. For the forgiveness of sins. The Eucharistic action is for the forgiveness of sin. And even though Jesus suffered grievously over the course of this passion, it is he who is in control, ultimately laying down his life as he prayed the 120, the 20, rather the 22nd Psalm. Indeed, that psalm ends with the hope and the promise that 
the divine will will be accomplished, if not in this moment, for a future generation. And we, in that future generation, are a part of the beneficiaries of that divine will. That through the dying and rising of Jesus, we find our liberation, we find our hope, we find our salvation. We see in Jesus the one whom the Philippians hymn extolled as being the hymn of self-emptying, the Godhead who set aside his divinity to clothe himself in our humanity and became obedient even to death on the cross. And that obedience merits the exaltation of the name of Jesus. In the heavens above, on the earth, and under the earth. And so the server in our restaurant sets before us the menu. The practical ones among us is that, well, sir, what's this going to cost us? I assure you, he says, the cost is within your means. And when we might look at that menu and say, gee, I've not been here before, what do you recommend? The server says, let me take care of you, and gathers up your menus and scurries off, returning with a first course of salad of the hearts of palm, lightly dressed with the oil of gladness. Reminiscent of those hosannas which hailed Jesus as the fulfillment of the hopes of Israel and also was a plea on our behalf for salvation. Save us, O Lord, who have no salvation out of you. Over the course of this week, I invite you to sit back and enjoy the meal. And when at the beckoning of the server, we are called to participate in this action, to follow him with faith. For if we endure the fullness of the feast to be set before us, that dessert menu will be brought forth. And we get a hint of that through the exaltation of the name of Jesus. Let us, in, let us enter these days with faith and hope and perseverance that we who pass through the cross may merit the light on the other side. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As Christ Jesus humbled himself and became obedient unto death, may we confess his lordship over us to the glory of God the Father as we offer our prayer for the needs of the church and the world and ourselves. For the ongoing conversion of all the baptized that are observance of the dying and rising of Jesus in these holy days may lead to the renewal of our hearts and minds. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our elect, chosen for Easter sacraments, and our candidates, completing Christian initiation, may persevere in their hunger for the faith and the sacraments of new life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the peace of Christ, which is beyond all understanding, may reign in our hearts for an end to division among peoples and nations. And for the peace of Jerusalem, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That dedicated young Catholics may respond to the call to serve the church as priests and religious. And for our pastor, Father Ed, who marks his 40th anniversary as priest on this Palm Sunday, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who, like Christ Jesus, are rejected, for victims of injustice and discrimination, and all those marginalized, and for all those on the front lines of the fighting the coronavirus, for all who suffered in any way, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died with Christ may rise with Christ on the last day. Let us also remember Richard Wagoner, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of mercy, hear our prayer and help us to identify with the passion and death of your Son so that we may share in the glory of his resurrection. And we ask this through the same Christ, our Lord.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name. For our good and all the souls of the Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, Yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent he suffered willingly for sinners, and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you, as with an egg of joyful celebration, we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaho, Leni Sunt Celi and Terra, Gloria to all, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, we vanit in nomine domini, Hosanna in You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offering and pour out on them the power of your spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus the Christ, in whom we have become your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we were once lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, alone, who is alone just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and once more giving thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Save us, Savior of the world For by your cross and resurrection You have set us free Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace. We celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to himself the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom. Until the hour we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy, and freed at last from the wound of corruption, and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by the word of God, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with each of you always. Oh.
se ve bueno pis, ni se ve bueno pis. On you stay, quit all these pecatamundi, ni se ve bueno pis, ni se ve bueno Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. All who are not receiving Holy Communion, are encouraged to express in their hearts a prayerful desire for unity with the Lord Jesus and with one another. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Nourish with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm going to need it. Give me the announcements. In my pocket. We want you to be sure to continue to check out the parish website for resources to engage in church, in our church in exile during these days of sheltering in place and staying at home. 
As well, we will live stream the liturgies of the Easter Triduum and post them on our website to keep you connected to our holiest days. Our live stream times for broadcasting the Triduum liturgies from Our Lady of the Valley will differ from the times traditionally followed in our combined parish family. The Liturgy of the Lord's Supper will live stream this Thursday at 6 p.m. The Liturgy of the Lord's Passion on Friday will live stream at 3 p.m. And the Easter Vigil on Saturday will live stream at 6 p.m. On Easter Sunday, our Mass will live stream here at St. Raphael at 10 a.m. And we regret that none of these liturgies are open to the public. A reminder that Good Friday is a universal day of fast and abstinence in preparation for Easter solemnities. Details are posted in our parish bulletin on the website. And at this time, there are no hard copies of the bulletin available. We will continue to make every effort to reach out to you during these times of physical separation. Parishioners are forming a good old-fashioned phone tree to stay connected, especially to those parishioners who are not electronically connected. If you or someone you know within our parish family could benefit from this outreach, or if you would like to be included in those making phone calls, leave your name and phone number at either parish office. These are tough times for us all, but your parish remains open and engaged as we are able at this time, and we depend on your ongoing support, even though we cannot physically come together. Thanks to those who have signed up for electronic giving through WeShare. The link is included on our parish website. Your church support can be mailed or dropped off at the parish office during regular business hours. Your support is needed now more than ever. And just a reminder, parish offices will be closed on Good Friday and Easter Monday. Let me assure you of my prayer and the prayer of our parish staff for each and every one of you within our St. Raphael and Our Lady of the Valley community and beyond. Uh, that we will pray for you during these holy days as we hope you will pray for us, and that together as a world community that we might pray for an alleviation of this health crisis, and in a special way for all of those who are on the front lines, our doctors, our nurses, our medical personnel, our first responders, the people working in your grocery stores and stocking the shelves, to realize that they are offering an incredible service for all of us. And always be safe, be connected, and be engaged in these holy days. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.